All right. So I get started. Then. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. I have this presentation about uh, WP, which is a web engine based on WebKit and designed for embedded platforms. So during the talk, I give a short introduction about WebKit, a very short overview. Um, and then I will more focus on applications, um, how you can use WP in your application, what are the use cases for it, and um, I probably, if I have time, I will give a short demo about uh, something I wrote. All right, so I'm Philippe. I'm a WebKit reviewer, a distributor commuter, and I work for a company uh, based in Spain called Igalia. Uh, we are working on uh, cooperative and uh, we are currently about 90 happy Igalians across the world. Um, so what's WP? So it's, it's based on WebKit, which probably as you know was a uh, start, uh, project started by Apple as a fork of KHTML around 2004. And the main goal for them at the time was to, to build Safari. Um, and since then, other people joined the projects, other companies, and um, the community added new ports. Uh, I will talk about that later. Um, so the, I will briefly introduce the WebKit to multi-process uh, architecture. On that, that diagram, you can only see, only see two processes, but nowadays there are more. There's one about uh, network nowadays, one about storage, and there's recently introduced a GPU process as well. So the application is called the UI process in that architecture, and it communicates with other processes using IPC. Uh, and all, all the DOM passing, all the um, things internal to the web engine are, are done in those processes, like JavaScript and uh, all those things. Um, so WP is um, a port aimed for embedded platforms. Uh, traditionally, WebKit ports are built on top of a toolkit widget. Uh, a widget toolkit, sorry. <laughs> um, but this port is a bit special in the sense that it decouples uh, rendering to uh, dedicated, what we call rendering backends. Um, that means that um, it gives more flexibility to the application developers and there's more openness about the, the platforms that you can support in, with, using that model. So that means that the rendering is, is deferred to another uh, part of the, the, the port that is loaded at runtime, basically. And the input events are also handled uh, using that uh, model. Um, so those rendering backends are usually require uh, a thing called Wayland EGL, um, which is a way for applications to share uh, graphics resources between processes. And uh, they have um, EGL extensions dedicated to that. Um, so there are quite a few backends nowadays. I will just focus on two. And the first one is the FDO backend, which I will talk about in a minute. And the other one is the RDK backend, which is developed by uh, companies such as Comcast. And they have deployed it in a wide range of uh, set of boxes, actually, in the, in, on the, in the world. Um, <clears throat> so the FDO backend, it depends on in GL. So that means, usually, if you have a GPU driver that's using Mesa, or probably uh, something that provides EGL. Uh, you can have binary drivers. Um, so that, that backend provides a high-level API for applications to, to be able to get EGL images from the web engine and so that they can do whatever they want with that. And then that's also what we recommend for the, as the WP community. It's the backend used on the build boards and it's the, the backend we use the most currently in the community. Um, then, obviously, you need a browser or some kind of application. So at Igalia, we, we are working on a minimalistic browser called COG. Um, it depends on the WP backend, FDO, 
And it's really minimalistic. There's actually no, no window decoration, no nothing. Uh, and single web view, although we are working on multi, multi web view uh, support. And it also can be controlled using Dbus. So in your application, you can like remote control the browser using other applications, basically. <clears throat> um, so for, as a basic, you need to have a Wayland compositor to, to be able to run COG. But uh, since recently, we, we wrote a new backend that leverages the, the DRM architecture. And thus, we don't really require a running Wayland uh, compositor. So that's quite cool because um, it reduces the, the dependencies that you need for the application. And you, you, if you need a full screen application, you can use that backend. Um, like kiosks, uh, set top boxes, UI, uh, any full screen display. Um, and then the rendering is done with, uh, uh, with DRM. So the Wayland, the Wayland buffers are imported as uh, GBM result, uh, buffer objects and then rendered using DRM. <coughs> um, I have a small use case for, uh, small showcase for that. Uh, it's uh, basically a, a thing I did in my free time. I, I was a bit tired of using Kodi at home, so I wanted to have a minimalistic media center, um, self-contained. So I, I've built a um, web ex extension for WP, and that can be loaded at runtime by the web process. And in that web extension, I, I use a, a UPnP library I called um, libgupnp. And <laughs> Zishan is here. <laughs> okay. Um, so I use that library to, to discover uh, the media servers on the network. And then for each server, I modify the, the DOM and add list elements to the, to the HTML page rendered. So I, I, then I make a build a web page based on what's on the network, basically. Um, and then I can do the video playback with the normal video element. Uh, that's standard nowadays in WebKit. So there's a demo. Um, it's really 30 seconds. If you want to look at it on your phone, you can scan that code. Otherwise, I can just move on. But yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting showcase of uh, what you can do with COG. And um, uh, it gives a, an overview of, of really what you can do. <clears throat> um, Another thing I wanted to discuss about is uh, Qt applications. Um, as you probably know, Qt is used, uh, widely used in the industry nowadays. And if you have a um, web engine in your application, such as Qt WebKit or Qt Web Engine nowadays, um, you probably would like to have an alternative because Qt WebKit is not uh, maintained anymore. It has a lot of security issues. Um, and some people don't like Qt Web Engine because it's too big. Uh, yeah, so this is an alternative to, to those two options you have. So what we did in Upstream WebKit, we've built a QML module that can be swapped in instead of the Qt WebKit based uh, QML module. So if you have an application using Qt WebKit, you, you can directly use that module, <clears throat> and it will use internally WP instead of uh, Qt WebKit. So what you gain is a, a maintained web engine with security uh, releases. And uh, so in that sense, it's quite a, a good advantage. Uh, there are some drawbacks, though. Um, doesn't, it works only on Linux. So if your application needs to run on Windows, you're a bit screwed. Um, and then there's dependency on Wayland EGL. But, um, that we can't really work around. And it works currently on, in the EGLFS, QPA, and, and Wayland EGL as well. So that means it can work on desktop and on embedded platforms. <clears throat> so to enable it, you just need to download Qt WebKit, uh, WP WebKit, sorry. <laughs> and turn on that CMake option called the Enable WP Qt API. And then at runtime, you just need to make sure that the SO file is in your import path. And then I have a small uh, code snippet, uh, QML uh, snippet there, that shows how to 
basically use that uh, WP view in, in your application. So the changes compared to Qt WebKit is that you just need to change the import line and uh, the module name is WP view, but in the Qt WebKit world, I think it's, it, it's a different name. Otherwise, the API is similar. So on title change here, that is already available in Qt WebKit can be used as it is. <coughs> All right, so, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about is how to use WP in multimedia application using this streamer. Uh, that's a bit of a novel way. Um, think about streaming browsers or uh, HTML overlays in live, live TV, for instance. Uh, so that could be a use case for WP. Um, just a brief overview of, about GStreamer. Uh, who hasn't heard about GStreamer? Nobody? Yes? OK. So basically, it's a multimedia framework based on uh, uh, graphs. So in your application, you build a graph, and the data flow will flow from the source to the sink, and there will be data processing like decoding and rendering. Um, there's many, many plugins. I won't go into details. But what I did is write a new plugin that uses WP and I built a source element for that, so that the, the, the video, uh, the web view, can be outputted as a video, basically, as a video stream. And it's quite cool because we we have zero copy uh, from WebKit world into GStreamer world using uh, the shared GL context. So there's no memory copies in, in there. And the use cases, as I said, uh, HTML overlays and uh, and uh, streaming browsers. I started, so that's a, a demo I wrote. On the right side, you can see some HTML, and on the left side, the preview of it with a live, live uh, video uh, be behind. And then you can stream that. Uh, I can show, you, show it later, maybe. <clears throat> and when you update the HTML, it's uh, updated in the video, of course. So that's for like the TV broadcasting world. It, it could be useful, for instance, uh, Um, some ongoing work I've been doing lately on that plugin, adding audio support. I have a prototype already. Um, I need to upstream it. And then navigation events in GStreamer are not really, uh, have been designed many years ago and needs to be modernized a bit. So I started working on that as well, mainly adding uh, mouse scroll support to events uh, and improving keyboard support as well. <coughs> um, so the code is in wpwebkit.org. Um, we have a Yocto layer. The support is upstream in Builtroot as well. This has been working quite well on IMX6, IMX8M platforms, Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Um, and it's deployed in the wild already. So you can use it uh, now. Uh, I guess I have time for a demo, maybe? Can... OK. <laughs> if it works. Okay, it doesn't work, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> but you can install it with, uh, there's a flat pack available, and you can install it quite easily on your desktop. Um, I can provide the flat pack uh, ref in, later on if needed. Uh, but I don't have it installed here, so I don't know. No, it's not working. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer.
Yes, a question? Uh, so how's platform support? I've seen some support for IMX6, IMX8, right? Uh, anything kind of new and notable in that? Sorry, can you... Anything new and notable from like platforms supported by WP? Yeah, so I can say that I've been working on, um, more especially on IMX 8M lately, um, on adding WP, making sure that WP works uh, with the Ednaviv driver, perfect driver, instead of the Vivante. And um, apart from that, uh, I'm not sure what you expect, um, what you're asking about. But, yeah. Uh, sorry, a quick question. Sorry if uh, it's basic. Um, just wanted to know what the license for WPE is. Yeah, uh, so the license is uh, BSD and LGPL too. Okay, thank yeah. you.